So far, this monitor has worked amazingly with the Steam Deck, and you know, having those extra USB ports and Ethernet on the monitor itself really help out with I.O. on the deck. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pixio PX2770 Pro. Now this is a 27 inch gaming monitor that I've actually had my eye on for a little while and one of the main reasons I wanted to pick this up was the support for USB Type-C video and 65 watt PD fast charging right out of that same port. So inside of the box, obviously, you're going to get the monitor. We've also got our two-piece stand here and an external power supply. Now, I understand a lot of people want an internal power supply so they don't have an extra brick laying around. But the main reason they kept it external is because it does need that extra 65 watts because we've got 65 watt fast charging out of USB Type-C on this thing. And we've also got video in through that. So if you do have a device that only has a single USB port for uh, video out, data, and charging, like the Steam Deck, this monitor is going to be perfect. And if we take a closer look at the I.O. on the monitor itself, you can see that we've got USB-B. We've also got two USB-A 3.0 ports and gigabit Ethernet. And this monitor does support KVM between the USB-B and the USB Type-C port we have over here. So basically what we can do with this is share the USB 3 ports on the monitor and Ethernet between the USB-B and USB Type-C. So this does make it really easy to add I.O. to devices like the Steam Deck and your Android phone that just don't have extra USB ports on it. Now before we get into testing, I did want to give you a quick look at the specs here. So we've got a 27 inch flat IPS display at 2560 by 1440. So we've got a 1440p display here at 165 hertz. 450 nits of brightness, 1 millisecond response time, it does have FreeSync Premium built in. It's got speakers, but they're not the loudest. I mean, I wouldn't rely on these, but they can get you by if that's all you got for now. It's got two 2 watt speakers, and you know, when it comes to the IPS display itself, I think this thing looks absolutely amazing. It's 131% sRGB, and I do like a little oversaturation, so we do have that here right out of the box. 96.6% DCI-P3, 92.8% NTSC, and 97.1% ARGB. Now, for me, like I mentioned, that 131% sRGB is where it's at. I just love the way this thing pops. So I've had a week to spend with this monitor and I'm really enjoying it with all of the devices I've tested it with so far. And as you can see, we've got height adjustment. It also supports swivel. So uh, any angle you want, you can get it set up on your desk. It's got tilt. And my favorite feature here, we can actually flip this totally vertically. We've got enough room here to go vertical with it. And this is really great for coding or I mean even web page design. So you've got a really nice ledger here to kind of go down. And I think I might pick up an extra one just so I can have one of these sitting on the left hand side vertically all the time. And then, you know, have my main monitor, which would sit horizontal. And that'll just be my main monitor. But over here on my secondary vertical monitor, I can get a lot done. I almost forgot to mention this, but there is an RGB bar on the rear. From the OSD, we can just turn it on or off and it's just going to cycle through the colors. I also wanted to give you a quick look at the OSD. This does have upgradable firmware. I'm on version 1.0, but there is an update available on their website right now as I'm making this video. It's 1.1. But from the OSD, we've got a lot of customization that we can do. We can change the brightness, contrast, black levels, all the basics there when it comes to color control on one of these monitors. From the gaming setup menu, we've got FreeSync Premium, Overdrive, HDR, DCR, and we've also got this Game Assist. There's some cool features built in here, like a timer, an on-screen crosshair, and an FPS counter. Now, unfortunately, the FPS counter is only going to give us the screen's refresh rate. It has nothing to do with the game you're playing, but it might come in handy just to make sure you're set up at the correct refresh rate with your display. And like I mentioned, we can disable that RGB on the rear, but uh, one of the main things here, if you're going to be using USB Type-C video, is the KVM section. So from here, we can set KVM up through the USB-B port or USB-C. And if you're connected to, let's say, the Steam Deck, and you want to use that Ethernet and extra USB ports on the monitor, you will have to set this to USB-C. So obviously it's going to be really hard to show you how smooth this is through YouTube video. You're probably watching this at 60 FPS and this is running at 165 Hertz. And I'm really close here with Forza Horizon 5. I'm on my main gaming PC with an i9-13900K and an RTX 3080 Ti. 
And even though this isn't a 4K monitor, it's only coming in at 1440p, it looks absolutely amazing. And this is exactly how I wanted to play my games. First and foremost, this monitor was made for a PC, but we've got that USB Type-C video in with 65 watt PD fast charging. So we can connect devices like the Steam Deck, and this is one of my main use case scenarios so far with this thing. And all we need to do is plug in that single USB Type-C cable, and on the back of the monitor I've actually got Ethernet plugged in, and a mouse and keyboard. I've also tested external storage, which works over USB-C. And you see it just swapped over to Ethernet, so I've got faster speeds here. And my mouse and keyboard is working. This actually works really well in desktop mode with the Steam Deck. Now that's one of the major downsides in my opinion. I think they should have added at least one full size USB on the Steam Deck just to make it a bit easier. But with a monitor like this, kind of solves all of those issues. And of course you could always use the built-in Steam Deck controls, but I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth and we'll get right into a little bit of gameplay here with Spider-Man Miles Morales. So when it comes to gaming in dock mode on the Steam Deck, obviously we're really not going to be able to game much at 1440p with these newer AAA games, but you know, older stuff actually runs well at 4K. Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life 2, and it looks great on here. But right now, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales at 720p, and even though we're on a larger display, I still think it looks great. Now, it would be nice to be able to run this game at 1440p on the Steam Deck itself, but unfortunately, we just don't have enough power. Recently, we got a new update for this game, which did improve performance. I mean, if you take a look at my little performance overlay, sometimes we can hit 60 with this at low settings with some FSR on, and it's really not that bad for running on a Steam Deck here. But yeah, I mean, I've actually been really enjoying using this with the Steam Deck, and this is something that I could recommend. I mean, if you're already in the market for a good monitor, then having that USB Type-C is just an extra plus. We don't have to worry about a dock or anything like that because we have those extra USB ports and Ethernet on the monitor itself. But another big thing I've been using this with is my Android device. So I've got a Samsung Galaxy S21 here, and it has Samsung Dex built in. And if you're not familiar with DeX, the Samsung Galaxy S line of phones and tablets has this built in. As you can see, we've got basically an Android desktop operating system here. And we can utilize those extra USB ports on the monitor. And if you wanted to plug in Ethernet, it'll also work with this device. Now, like I mentioned, the Samsung Galaxy S line of tablets and phones does support this, but other manufacturers have been jumping on the bandwagon. Like Motorola has their new Ready 4 desktop on their newer phones, and it does work really well. I actually really enjoy using that one. But I think this is great for getting a little bit of work done, some media consumption, emulation, and even native Android gaming. And by the way, this will support the full resolution of the monitor, 1440p. And it really does look great. It also supports HDR over USB Type-C. Got an HDR 4K 60fps video here running from YouTube, and it looks amazing. And there was one more I wanted to show you here. Like I mentioned, other manufacturers are kind of adding in a desktop style mode to their Android devices. And right here I've got the Red Magic 7S Pro, and this is a bit different from like a full-fledged desktop. This is an Android gaming phone. It's got a built-in fan and a Snapdragon 888 Plus. And what they've come up with is more of a gaming-orientated external display setup. It does run at 1440p. We can go through and add our favorite games and emulators, and it's really easy to get in and out of games. We can use an external controller, or you could use a keyboard and mouse if you want to. And again, we're still using those USB ports on the monitor with this device also. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I do a lot with Samsung decks and phones that do support display over USB Type-C. Most of the time, I'm using either an HDMI to USB Type-C adapter or a dock. But now, with something like this, I mean, it alleviates all of those for me. Really awesome setup. So yeah, personally, I think this is a great monitor for your PC, your Steam Deck, your Android phone, your single board computer that supports USB Type-C video out and power in. That way you only need one cable to get that thing connected. And uh, real quick, we're in desktop mode with the Steam Deck. As you can see, I've got my main display set up with the Pixio PX2770 Pro, and I've still got access to the built-in Steam Deck screen here in desktop mode. And you could definitely use this as a full-fledged desktop. Now you don't need a monitor like this to do it. You can 
can actually just use a USB type C to HDMI adapter. You can pick them up pretty cheap on Amazon or even a dock. But just having this all in one package, in my opinion, is just really awesome. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the Pixio PX2770 Pro, I will leave some links in the description. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.